Hi, my name is Christina and I am your librarian here at Christina's Bookshelf. And today I am bringing you The Promise of Living by J. Lee Graham. This is a MM historical romance. And I say romance and I want you to have some leeway with that word because really it's MM historical. It's a coming of age story. It's kind of a coming out story in a sense. It's really an acceptance story. Our main character is Ryan. Ryan and his best friend Dave, they're in high school, it's the 70s. And there's no, I'm gay. They're in this small town, it's called Willows Ferry. It's a short drive from Boston. It just has that small hick town feeling. I mean, Ryan and Dave work on a dairy farm when they're not in school. So after hours, on the weekends, during the summer, this is what they do. Dave is like the Manly's man. I mean, he hit puberty young. He has these beautiful sideburns, this wonderful hair. Ryan is in love with it. Ryan has this blonde hair and he can't get anything on his face to grow. Oh, but God, does he wish he could. Between them, I would say there's some unrequented love, but that's kind of even using a loose term. But how do you tell somebody that you're in love with them when that's very not the thing to say? I mean, it even holds true in today's world when there's more acceptance. Before I go any further in this review, I want you to understand that there's a hot topic in this story and a profound thing that goes on. We have mental illness, we have suicide, murder. So if any of these things are hot topics for you, I get it, I want you to know ahead of time, but this book is so good. So Ryan and Dave are at work when Ryan all of a sudden, out of nowhere, this has never happened before, he gets this vision of a lady killing herself. <laughs> what do you do with this? I mean, it's clear as day, like he is there watching her, but he's at work, he's on the farm. He doesn't tell Dave this happens. He just kind of tells him he has like, he had a spell, everything's okay. The next thing he hears is an ambulance and he's like, we have to find where that is going. Well, it turns out it's the mom of a kid they're going to school with. This kid has like no friends because he's kind of weird. His mom, really weird. So they're having the funeral for her. Do you go? Do you not go? Ryan is familiar with death. His mother died when he was younger. So does he want to go back to the funeral home and have all those feelings dredged up again for a kid that he doesn't really know? Or does he go to work? If he goes, what does he say? What does he do? How does he act? But he's 17. He's on the verge of being a man. What decision does a man make? Some time passes and he thinks it was just this one time event. But then later he has another one. And again, it's crystal clear like he's there. And he sees someone being murdered. But he can't see who's being murdered and he can't see the murderer. And this is when he brings in Dave. And Dave's just kind of like, whoa. And eventually they bring in another guy into this little pack of theirs named Skylar. He is a new kid in town from Boston. And he's the son of this like well-known artist. So they're thinking he's gonna know more and he's gonna be cool with it because he's had more experience. And he is. He actually has a little bit of knowledge and he's like, I can help you out with this. And it's not like he has this great wealth of knowledge and what he brings to the table. I thought it was quite comical, the piece of evidence he brings that says, this is what I think you have and this is how I know you might have it. But it helps. And he says, I can take you to somebody in Boston to help you with this. So they're planning this trip when this huge tragic event happens and it devastates Ryan's world. So much so. I mean, it's just been Ryan and his dad forever and they are a solid duo. But Ryan physically fights his father. Ryan goes into this huge depression. Ryan's father puts him in an institute to try to help him get better. I mean, Ryan falls, but he learns something great. It's too late, but it's great. So when he eventually gets to Boston, he's able to accept more than one truth, more than just the visions. He's able to accept himself. He can now actually say out loud, I'm gay and be accepted. And that is like the biggest thing. So yes, there's some romance in this book. There's great friendship in this book. There's mental illness that goes through this book. Uh, we meet Dave's mom who's fucking batshit crazy. We meet a plethora of just individuals and you see high school, like it just doesn't change. You get to see people figure out about Ryan and their reactions 
and how he's expecting, you know, like the world to burst into flames and for hell to consume him and how the world takes in this information. And there's an epilogue at the end and it's like the shortest thing ever, but it was like the most priceless piece of information, I thought. It was beautiful. The story, I'm not gonna lie, I bawled my eyes out at different times. I cried myself to sleep one night because of this book. The promise of living is a pronounced theme through this. I mean, we see how precious life is in this book, how precious every breath is, and I loved it. Now, <laughs> I did a bad thing and I looked at some Goodreads reviews. I agree with some, like the paranormal aspect of it, seeing the visions, I mean, we could have done without that and the book would have still been fantastic. But I liked how that was added in. It brought some character. Ryan's mom died of leukemia when he was younger, so for him to have these episodes really freaked some people out because he didn't all have them like in secluded places. I mean, they would just come and it didn't matter where he was. I thought that it was amazing watching others deal with the craziness of Ryan, watching people accept the craziness of Ryan. I really, really, really just liked the story. I enjoyed the fact that it made me cry like a baby, that it made me feel so much. There's laughter, there's happiness, there's sorrow and pain, but it's beautiful. All of it. I give The Promise of Living by J. Lee Graham five stars. I absolutely was moved by this story. What I am going to do for you is I am going to leave the Amazon links down below so you can click it, read it, love it. It's magnificent. If you've enjoyed this review, I'm gonna ask that you help me with that YouTube algorithm and give me a like. Leave me a comment. I love to interact with all of you guys and go ahead and hit that subscribe button. I'm recovering from surgery number two this year and I don't quite know when reviews will be out, but that is the magic of the subscribe button is that you will get a notification when I have something new for you. If you like me and think this chick is pretty awesome, down below I'm going to leave stalker links aplenty. Go click investigate, enjoy. If you have a book or an arc you'd like me to read or some light editing proofreading you would like done, you may request via website. The Promise of Living by J. Lee Graham, five stars. Bye. Hi, my name is Christina and I'm your librarian here at Christina's Bookshelf and today I am bringing you Shadows on My Soul by Lee Jarrett. I have a blog post going and I have a 20 questions with Lee on my website. So if you haven't looked at it, go do that now. Or you know, watch this, then go do it, then buy the book and read it. Something in that order, it doesn't have to be exactly that, but make sure you get all those things. Before I start the review, I wanna tell you something